Hi, Emily. Hi, Jim. We have some mysteries to solve at the museum today. Are you ready to investigate? I am ready. Let's do it. As you know, we've been around for over 125 years. Yeah. And this is a big building. There are hidden uh, rooms in here. There are cabinets that we have to go through. Okay. And it's part of a, like a bigger question I want to talk about, about like what makes a museum collection museum collection? Because you know we have artifacts, we have dinosaurs, we have mammals and plant specimens. We have all sorts of things that people are actively researching. But we also have collections in this building that people aren't actually researching. They don't really fit into what our museum does. Yeah. So what do we do with those specimens? We make YouTube videos about them. Yay. <laughs> what we're going to look at today are, are objects, objects that I found in a collection that I had to sort of identify and figure out what its value was. Not necessarily monetary value, but scientific value. Yeah. And if it's something that we want to keep at the museum. I'll tell you, I'll show you how I went through it. I'm going to put my ignorance on full display to the world because I know nothing about this stuff. This isn't my area of specialty. So when I went down to the mineral collection one day, I looked in one of the cabinets that had no specimens in it. And I looked into the upper shelf and I saw, saw two clawed feet sticking out of the drawer. So I climbed up on the ladder, pulled it out, and it ended up being this large frame. So obviously something went in the middle of this frame. Um, so I, I flipped it over to see if I can find any maker's marks or jeweler stamps on it, and I did find a Tiffany stamp on it. So this was actually made by Tiffany and Company. So we got this in 1894 after the World's Columbian Exposition. But we also have this collection called the H Collection. The H Collection. And that refers to Higginbotham. Harlow Higginbotham to be exact. Okay. And he was one of our early benefactors of the museum. He actually purchased a collection from Tiffany and donated it to the museum when we first uh, opened our doors in 1894. During the course of investigating this, I found this one specimen, this carved quartz disc. Wow. And you can see a crack running through it. It was like it when I found it. It looks like a, like a baby scene. Uh, apparently it's Moses uh, being put into the river. And the frame that I found was actually built for it by Tiffany and Company in New York. But at some point, the two pieces got separated from one another. And I wanted to investigate what Tiffany and Company knew. So I contacted their archivist. So the frame itself was built around 1880 or so. Wow. So how old is this disc then? So I don't know. And, and the object next to me over here, this carved jeweled casket, as it's described as, is a kind of a similar quartz carving. So this material. Can you move this? Yes. So the, the carvings in the, in the clear material itself, that's actually quartz. Wow. So, and the rest of it's in brass and it has jeweled inlays and it wow. has, and inside the casket I found these little stamps that were stamped into the brass, maybe about less than a centimeter in diameter. Okay. So this piece I was able to trace back to um, an artist named Hermann Ratzendorfer. Okay. from Austria, and he was a prolific lapidary artist in the mid-1800s. At some point, this was purchased by, by Tiffany, put on display in the World's Columbian Exposition of 1893, purchased by Harlow Higginbotham, and donated it to the museum. The designs of this quartz disc um, is very similar. Yeah. So this is part of this tradition of lapidary art uh, in the mid-1800s. And what is lapidary art? It's basically creating objects out of natural um, minerals. So these are two items mm -hmm. that you've more or less figured out where they came from. Less and than more. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you're, sometimes. You're starting to answer some questions about mm -hmm. these mysterious objects, but there is a lot more material in this collection that uh, we're going to... A lot more material. We're going to look at. In this collection. Well, let's so. look at some of it. Reach into the bag of mystery. The bag of mystery. Oh, goodness. This is a blade with an ammonite in it. Very good. Games of Throny. Yeah, a little bit, but it also like this feels like plastic. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah it, it's a mineral called jet. What do you think that was used for? Avenging my <laughs> family members against my enemies. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's it just looks ornamental. Apparently, it was a letter opener. <gasps> a, a letter opener. Yeah, for those really angry, mean letters that you need opening right away. All right. Ooh, it's a thing. They look like fancy doorknobs. They're weighted. They're made of minerals. Yeah. Yeah. So this is quartz. It's quartz. Okay. That's uh, the smoky quartz. Mm -hmm. That is a uh, yellow mineral. It's rutilated quartz. Wouldn't have pictured that. Okay. This is uh, is this cat's eye? Tiger's eye. Tiger's eye. Well, tiger's cat. That's a cat. Close enough. <laughs> and obviously another quartz. Quartz. And then this is a pink one. It's a pink one. This is a piece of uh, rhodonite, which is a very 
popular uh, uh, lapidary mineral. And again, these were in the Columbian Exposition of 1893. So these are basically samples of seals that you can order and get your oh, actual uh, name, initials, whatever, engraved in them. Cool. So these are basically pieces from a trade show. I love seeing how status symbols change over time. Absolutely. Whereas today you would, I don't know what you would use as like a look at my fancy car, where yeah. back then it was like look at my horse and carriage and my custom quartz well, we letter don't, seal. We don't send letters anymore, right? That's we send true. emails. So what's the, today's equivalent? of a wax seal. Or like, it's no, like it almost your AOL signature. <laughs> your AOL signature. <laughs> Stamp, sealed, and approved. And delivered. Okay. So, let's see what's in this bag. That was a face that you made. No, that's not a face. This is a face. Oh, what? What is this? Wow. Is this a monkey wearing glasses? Or is it a lion wearing glasses? We'll leave it up to the viewers to decide. Monkey or lion? The matching set, what every household needs, is a monkey, lion, and a moon. Are they, what are the, are these ashtrays? I don't know what they are. Uh, obviously decorative. Yeah. Yeah. Soap dish, I can't imagine using this as a soap dish. So but this is made out of a, a, a mineral called gypsum. It smells, smell like. it smells a little like perfume. Does it? Yeah, like, so maybe like a scented soap. Who knows? The or moon? maybe it wasn't used for anything. Maybe they just hung it on a wall. My moon doesn't smell. This stuff is weird. Some of it is really weird. Yeah. And we haven't even got to the weird stuff yet. What? Evidence bag. I'm gonna reach in. <gasps> oh, they're little shoes! What? These are beautiful. Okay, these are both made in China, actually. Um, this was actually purchased from Ward's Natural Science Establishment. <gasps> really? Why is Ward's selling objects of this nature? So that's what they used to do. They used to collect objects from around the world. And what are they carved out of? Um, that's gypsum, okay. and this is pyrophyllite and some talc. So basically talc is a really soft mineral, mm -hmm. easy to carve, but it's also very easy to, to break and stuff like that. So it's a combination of the two. Okay. Yeah. What's two plus two? Four. What's four plus four? Eight. What's eight minus three? Uh, five. What's the square root of, t of nine? Why Which, are you cleansing me? Because we're gonna figure it out together. Okay. Using the 18th century version of I know what this is. This is an ab abacus. Wow, I've never known how these things work. Well, join the club. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's supposed to go like this because the number on the back says. I, I wouldn't trust the much. number because that's the number that oh, we put in there. Okay. No, yeah, you're right. Oh, okay. It, it was like that instead of like that. Gotcha. So this is a rhodonite. That's the name of this material here. Yeah. Abacus. Again, this is one we got in 1894. Okay. And how does an abacus work? I have no idea. But, you, but other than knowing that this is an abacus, we don't know much about where it's from. Well, I know where the materials came from. Actually, the, uh, the, the rhodonite is actually mined in the Ural Mountains of Russia. All right, here you go. Woo! Wait, wait a second. But it, it kind of looks like a letter opener. Or a seal it, again, right? This is yeah, a trick question. Yeah, that's what I meant. It, it looks like a, a seal, but it has a hole in it. It has a, a holder thingy. I don't know. What is this? Is it an end of end a... End of a walking stick. R oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's a really thin walking stick. Elementary, my dear Grizzly. So you would, you would hold on to this top. That's right. Your fancy walking stick top. With your with your pipe and your... Yeah, yeah. You're oh. walking to the opera. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. very good. And walk. Here we go. Okay, you ready for this? This yeah. is exciting. Here's what is awesome. this? <gasps> oh my goodness! <laughs> it's a little pupper! It's a little pupper. It's a little Scottish pupper! Made out of rose quartz. Yeah, he's so cute! The, in late 1800s, this really? was purchased in a gift shop in, in Mexico. I feel like you can still buy these sort of things today you, at yeah, the obviously, yeah. Do you have a name for him? Yeah. What is it? Chuck. This is Chuck? It's Chuck. Chuck the little Scotty dog. Yeah. He's so cute. I love him. I would buy this today because it's yeah. adorable. Would you put it in a museum though? Yes. <laughs> because I love dogs. The Emily Grasley Museum <laughs> of Pink Scotty Dogs. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, but I get where you're coming from without like knowing, you know, that this quartz is of scientific importance. Right. It sort of becomes like this curious like tchotchke. No, but I, I, I like that idea though that scientists and scholars today will continue to determine where these objects fit within mm -hmm. a museum collection and, and assign their own particular value to right. them. Right. Yeah. Okay, moving on. <gasps> what do you think what? that is? What? I have no idea. Like, Let's look at the one in your left hand first. This one. Okay. Yes. 
Apparently, everyone smoked back then. Yeah. Because that's a cigarette holder. This is a cigarette holder. How do you smoke out of it? It might have been decorative. So for, for the person who like wants to look fancy while smoking, but it actually doesn't want to smoke. Yes. Oh, okay. Again, we go to the internet hordes for answer for that one. Yeah. If you have any ideas, let us know in the comments below. It's very pretty. And please don't smoke. Don't smoke. Like and this that. one, this is for picking your tiny boogers. <laughs> <laughs> well, we found out what it was from a tour I gave. That is a button hook. A button hook? Yeah. And then our talented research staff here at the museum looked up what a button hook is. So old timey lady boots yeah. had these buttons along the side and yeah. a leather flap to hold it together. Right. And you couldn't push these buttons through easily. You needed the help of a tool like this to actually go through the hole, grab the button, hook it, and pull it through. Button hook. I like how my mind goes to the grossest thing imaginable. Yeah, and thanks for that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Down to the objects that we don't know. Okay. Well, not necessarily what they are, but how they were used. Gotcha. And this is where we're gonna rely on your audience to fill it in. Viewers at home. All right, so get your... Get your... Magnifying man. glass. Man. What, man. what was that? Man, what are you, the, the penguin? I don't know. Man, Batman, I'm gonna get you, Batman. Let's start with, with these guys. So this is listed in our catalog as beads. What kind of bead is that? So imagine like um, a string going through it and wearing yeah. that. Yeah. How does that work? I think of two things. I think of like maybe our catalog got it wrong from the get go. Sure. That the description of it being beads. And so that's a possibility there. Are they are they beads or are they not beads? Are, are they early um Oh my god, no. Yeah. Like jewel knuckles? I'm not advocating for violence. So if you know what these are at home, let us know. And this is a this is listener catalog as a jade fob. So what's interesting about it, it has a little ring yeah. at the bottom. And the ring and the whole fob in general were carved together. And this is jade. And it's made out of jade. And jade's really easy to carve oh. relative to other minerals. But it's pretty hard mm -hmm. mineral. And it has a little flower on this end. <laughs> <laughs> See, the flower looks like a, one of the flowers from uh, Breath of the Wild from the Zelda game. And this last piece. Okay. Well, that looks like a necklace. But in our catalog, it's listed as a watch fob. A watch fob. Oh, you know what? Yeah, my dad has one of okay, these. Okay, good. How does it work? I don't exactly know, but the idea is that you can somehow attach your watch mm -hmm. and then string it through your jacket. That's what I want to know. Well, because this part would go to the watch, and then so. it's been linked together somehow. This is weird. Isn't it weird? Yeah. Oh, this comes. This opens. Wait, wait. You got that? Yeah, this Let's opens see. right here. And you can get that out like that. So that uh, solves one thing. Yes. And so then you would put this so the watch, through the watch. So that goes on the watch. I think so. Because the watch has like a little um, the ring, on, the the ring on it. So you put it through the ring yeah, all and, the way, then you kind of hook it on. And this is weighted on this side. So you so your watch hangs oops, your watch hangs in your coat, and then you can attach this to your other pocket pocket thingy. There's a lot going on here. A lot going on. That's a lot of bling for a watch. Yeah. I'd wear it. <laughs> cool. Well, mystery semi salt. Yeah. So, Jim, this was a, an interesting exploration today. It's, yeah, a lot of random stuff we looked at today. Thank you for sharing this with your public, and I hope we get some good comments. Yeah. And I want everyone to say goodbye to Chuck, Chuck the Scotty. Goodbye, Chuck. Bye, Chuck. I hope it's not the last time we meet. Arf. It still has brains on it.